<laughs> if you told me this was the field recording of someone pressing numbers into a microwave oven, culminating in a horrific accident, I'd probably believe you. Tell you the truth, I'm convinced that this is that. <laughs> One of the highlights in exploring for new releases is coming across diverse styles of music that you wouldn't have otherwise given a chance. In this case, I discovered what Mande music was this month, music of the West African population that speaks any of the Mande languages. Miri is a harmonious and uplifting album in that regard, only helped by Kuwati's virtuosic command of the Ngoni, the strumming instrument here. It's not showed off massively here, I'd recommend watching his KEXP show to be wowed by that, but instead this album showcases a warm sense of community that you can't really get from much else, I've realised. Like Betty Who is without a doubt a very good singer. I'm a big fan of electropop artists this decade being genuinely good vocalists with a lot of control over which notes they want to hit. Sorry Brittany, I still bump your shit. But this album lacks much else in the way of a personality. It even has those ooh vocal snippets that permeate the air of 2010's EDM slickened pop like seagulls at a beach picnic. Maybe a bouncy house inspired rhythm or a clean hook, but I imagine during my listen that I'd just sort of not remember it. I'm usually rubbish at predictions, but I was right here. There's no speakably bad song to be fair, but it's all a bit indescript. I can't really find much else to muster up if it's just one indescript song onto the next, except maybe an urge to listen to Aluna George instead. <laughs> I was let down by this one a little bit, and that sucks, because cold and eerie synth music with pulsing beats is my absolute jam, and I was hoping that this one could be a new addition to the shelf of prize albums of that style, but instead it'll be gathering dust in the that was a little bit disappointing cupboard. Careful is a little too careful if you catch my drift, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the frigid atmosphere is there, the perfect sounds are there to craft with. My word, the beats are there for sure, absolutely certain. That percussion smacks like industrial machinery collapsing into a gigantic junk heap. And yet the songs do very little to accommodate that with anything aside from awkwardly breathy vocals that passively hover over everything. Eventually I just begin to tune it all out. A lot of the work is being done by the instrumental which makes this seem like a very lopsided effort overall. There's this misconception that floats around sometimes that live recording albums can't hit as hard as a studio one, which is obviously wrong, but if you need a recent example, British Murder Boys have something to offer. I'm not entirely familiar with their previous work or if they have any previous work at all, but I got the gist pretty quickly with the opening minutes of Fire in the Still Air. You're dished a 51 minute serving of creatively textured industrial techno that seems to refuse to let its rhythm falter for the entire runtime, like how the best of body moving music should be. I can still feel the pounding in my head. <laughs> There's this powerful use of melody that great metalcore bands use sometimes. You might associate the genre with dissonant, brutal riffs and screamy, scary vocals, but they can feed melody into there to provide a cathartic sense of relief. Sort of like that feeling when you slap a mosquito bite, which might hurt, but it also relieves you of the itchiness there. Or maybe you've just held a heavy object for a long time and you finally get to place it down or edging. Caster's Hollow managed to do this so well and so consistently throughout the entirety of Shape and Void that it makes this an undeniably fantastic metalcore album, a ton of masked beauty behind the scungy veil of moss and icky black tar. <laughs> Chaka Khan is a funk legend, in case you somehow needed reminding, but there's something about her new album that kind of underwhelms me. There's such a potential for badassery there because Khan is such an attention-grabbing singer, but the instrumentals never sound like fully crafted vessels to carry her voice. A bit like half-cooked rice. I love synthetic wigs a lot. On the other hand, here's a set of minimal tracks with groove that do themselves a lot more justice. Just the subtle slivers of harmony and the teasing of you with crispy drum rhythms that bring you a ton of bliss when the hooky melody does pop into action. I'm so into this and I hope you end up being too. <laughs> For most self-proclaimed and hilariously unapologetic music nerds on the internet, this won't actually be the first time you've heard Clementine Creevy's voice. I was reminded beforehand that she'd lent her commanding presence to the beginning of a Death Grips album one time, and no, I didn't expect at all that her music would sound anything like Death Grips because that's a silly thing to do, but I couldn't help but feel a little bit underwhelmed that such a commanding and personable voice was leading forth some pretty tepid indie pop and rock tunes. They're just a bit plain and usual, really. Wasted None has a quasi-epic roar to it, but so does the carrot juicer at Tank. For a homemade set of tracks, this hits so abrasively and bumps so hard, taking pages from the books of maximalist pop trends during the popularity crests of Winter Gordon and Bro Step, ripping them up and making weapons out of paper mache. It's very on the nose, but the best on the nose music is the kind that is completely unapologetic and convincing about it. So take that and run with it, I reckon. First name, Benjamin, last name, Counter. Pull up with this motherfucking tech, fuck a bouncer. I was going to write my review on a napkin because the music is that disposable. Some deeply shitty lyrics on here too, but it's just for the provocation. 
provocation, isn't it? Homophobic provocation isn't enough for a brief blast of trap rap with about as much identity to itself as the new Gunner album, and that one I gave up on after three songs. The most that this will give you is the most nervous laughter, the more that you tune into what Comethazine is huskily yelling. <laughs> Cozy Fanny Toti is a bit of a legend, really. Though I've never been a fan of Throbbing Gristle, her solo ventures into industrial soundscapes are far more compelling for me. Perhaps it's the focus on ever so slightly pulsing rhythms, but it might just be the sheer human honesty breathed into those soundscapes. This doesn't sound like the most complete or even mind-blowing series of instrumental tracks, but it gave me shivers at one point or another, which has got to count for something, doesn't it? A few weeks back, I chuckled at a tweet calling this duo the Yeehaw Chainsmokers, since they seem able to write the most rinse and repeat bro country songs with lyrics derived from the most surface level platitudes of a culture it only seems barely indebted to. I don't really mind if they're trying to convince themselves that their music is country when they invite Jason Derulo over for a woman ogling session, but at least write good songs in the process, without having to throw hysterically crap pick up lines into the fold. I was this close from making a V Roosh comparison. <laughs> Inspired by the magical soundtracks of classic video games, Gaijin Blues brings forward a set of four gorgeous electronic tracks, a little off-kilter in form, but genuinely so pleasing. Like, I felt inspired to start just putting together a new project in RPG Maker again. I might just, actually. It's a bit one note, yes, but that one note pounds and scrapes like a multi-purpose meat tenderizer slash cheese grater, and the results seem just as unhygienic. That's ironic, because they're called health. Closer to industrial metal than the manic, unkempt, post-punky soundscapes of before, the ones that soundtrack your frolicking through an airport in Max Payne 3, and even if the vocals serve little power at all, this album finds its own joy in simply slapping silly. <laughs> There's a lot to appreciate from Ithaka's much more nuanced approach to writing metalcore songs. Every switch to a new tasty twirling riff is a little bit like a skateboarding combo. It's mostly riff, some moments are stiff, but the overall effect is that it's lit like a spliff. I know where you live, I used to live there I was ready to just not really be into this considering that indie guitar led singer songwriter music tends to breeze over my ears lightly like a socially awkward ghost. Truthfully, I just wanted to get it out of the way. I think the most stripped down songs really let Jacqueline's impassioned performances down on a few occasions, given that there are a lot of them, but the urgency of pressure to party and the emotive crumbling of the pastry of self-trust that occurs part way through Turn Me Down make me glad that I went in with an open mind. Granted, not much ended up going through the entrance, but two songs is a decent takeaway. <laughs> My first impression of Kel Asuf's music had me reminded strongly of my usual dislike for nudely solo-centric prog rock, but then I realised this isn't prog rock, it's Tishumarin, the stylistic flair of North African desert blues led predominantly by electric guitar and channeled by Asuf to express his unrest and steadfastness, but then I also realised I'm not totally into that style of music either, so what do I do now? Press on to understand the music and its background further in the hopes of appreciating it more, or backpedal into the pool of already acclaimed indie favourites to remain safe in my prognosis? Have you heard it on the news? Well. I liked this one at least. LCD Sound System's comeback album aged on my liking about as well as a slice of baguette that somehow slipped into and stayed in my pocket for over a month. There's an awe-inspiring streak of excellence in the middle there, it carries the rest of the project on a hospital stretcher. These sessions here sound pretty good in comparison, or perhaps the repackaging managed to fool me. Well, now I just don't know what to think. <laughs> I honestly wished for a lot more power from these songs, they're so well written, but it always seemed like something was missing from the mix, like a raising agent and a muffin recipe. It's not there, so the track doesn't really lift, but it certainly tastes good for the time being, anyways at least. Terry Genderbender is a commanding fronter for the band at least, and I have to admit that this cover artwork drives me absolutely wild. They're the songs of smitten planets. It's not organised into any specific sequence, but neither is our entire galaxy, so Lee Gamble gets a solid cluster of cred for this one. 
As much as I enjoyed Watch My Back, this one kind of breezed by again. The awkward ghost returns. It is worth a listen to Lucky's tapes. His delivery and production in tandem make for a hazy, swirling experience. Unfortunately, as a whole, they lack very much in the way of memorability because they act mainly on being so loose and nonchalant. A little disappointing in retrospect. <laughs> My thesis is that with the right noise in the right places, you can transport me right down to an abandoned basement amok with insects and rats. Bloody fantastic. The one thing I remember is drum rhythms, and those drum rhythms overwhelm me. The droning that it's paired with as the tracks scamper faster and faster disorients you rightly, and makes Nyloxica's effort so intoxicating from start to finish. Definitely one of the prize EPs of the year so far. <laughs> It's a sincere celebration of what makes mathcore and metalcore as a genre so great, sadly to the point where it fails to show much personality of its own. At the very least it's a short one, entailing only about 20 minutes, which is about the amount of time it takes for me to reheat a hash brown in the oven, so I had a good snack. <laughs> The most disheartening noise music is the kind that isn't even cathartic. On the bright side, there's a new Japanese funk recording, and that's honestly a lot more engaging and exciting. It sounds a bit like if Britpop was launched into space, or at least I wish most of it was. Brickbat isn't a bad album by any means, built by a number of accomplished musicians, lavish and attempting to sound immense. Pretty melodies hold the album together like loose nuts and bolts, but this spacecraft flies on by a bit too passively to stick in my head any more than the song by Pulp. <laughs> For an album in the subgenre of metal I seldom care for, this isn't too shabby. I wish it didn't just drop its sack and collapse into acoustic territory for the final track. That's a bit of a cop-out after three decently enthralling Celtic folk metal appliances. I'm still not really sure how to describe this one, and something about it gives me the sense that it was never really meant to be easily captured, so I think the best way is to stare at the album artwork and try to imagine what it sounds like, and then listen to the full thing and be somewhat surprised by how close your guess was. My head hurts. You'll get touches of lovely sound design, but it doesn't click into anything astounding. The album runs its course pretty early on, ending in a series of rinse and repeat vignettes. I often avoid saying things like, every track sounds the same, because a lot of the time they don't. But this... Well, well I think you can tell where I was going with that one. Initially I got nothing out of this one, none of it seemed to have much power or bombast, and I'm not sure why I was expecting it to, because when I returned to this album knowing it wasn't a bombastic one, I sort of got it. I think its instrumental palette is a bit weak source, the synthesizers have that whoopee cushion level of potency, but it makes do with what it's got, and manages to permeate the air with a sense of impending ruination. <laughs> Remember that Sons of Kemet album you all loved from last year? The one that should have won the Mercury Prize? Theon Cross from that group dropped a solo album, one that's actually super good. It's kinda what you would expect from the Afro Jazz slash funk group, but it is a fierce endeavour regardless, as you should expect. <laughs> Brutal Prog is the label that this was given. Brutal indeed. It begins with a swirling 11 minute track and continues its dizziness without feeling as if the musicians got carried away and pulled the track right out of control of itself. This is consistently thrilling and really, really good. <laughs> I remember finishing my listen to this album and having some things to form a coherent conclusion with, but I was in a rush to leave for something, so I just jotted some things down. And quite honestly, I think those unfinished notes are far better than anything I could string together properly, so here's what I wrote. Feels like breath down the back of neck, would be fitting to hear in background of Ratchet and Clank game. Pulses with no hypnosis and noises with no catharsis. Like strong wind, title track does good job, these bitches love Sosa. When it came to albums of the month, it was quite difficult to narrow it down to like four picks like I did last month because there was a lot more releases to digest. So I decided to do six, just tack a couple onto the end there, no harm done. This is a nice chance for you to be reminded of what I did like because it seems during this roundup video I didn't like many things at all. I do like music, I promise. I am going to rank them, but to be honest the ranking is kind of arbitrary, I just like a build up to the best of the month. But my number six pick would be Shoo Shoo's Girls with Basket of Fruit. The avant-garde group Shoo Shoo have never been one whose projects are the kind of things that you would listen to once and sort of get. They grow on you with multiple listens and I think this one was definitely a good reminder that 
the more you listen to it, the more you begin to unpack and uncover and sort of realize how well it all binds together, exploring the vile tragedies and, and disgusting concepts that trail throughout human history. But in its execution, it achieves something pretty unique, which is to translate all of that into sonic form. It's like a sound collage, it's like a, a found footage film, but in audio form. It's one of the most disturbing things I've ever heard, and I think there's a lot of merit to be put through that. My number five pick is Yugen Blackrock. Anima Mysterium. This is a very meditative and night-ready hip-hop album from Yugen Blackrock, a South African rapper that was featured on the Black Panther soundtrack last year and had one of the standout verses on that thing on the track, Ops. Yugen Blackrock has a fascinating approach to writing lyrics about socio-political issues. She views the world through a science fiction lens and there are some truly chilling metaphors and images and all of that. I think this is fantastic. My number four spot goes to my boy, Buffalo Staple with Vale Smith, a great EP with four tracks called Exordium, Delicacy, Vestibule and Farce. These tracks are beautiful, they're creative, they're catchy, they're icy, they're frigid. Um, yeah, no, Vestibule's been stuck in my head for about a week. They're heavily inspired by progressive electronic music, future bass, wonky, uh, trap. A lot of reason to get down to the grooves on this one. My number three spot goes to Shy's new album or EP. It's only about half an hour but it's extremely beautiful, very peaceful and, and glistening with this childlike curiosity. Throughout the entire thing there's this sense of nostalgic imagination, that freedom you have as an adolescent uh, as you want to explore the world and express yourself but the anxieties of the incoming adulthood are just creeping in so unsettlingly. I, I, man I managed to attach quite a few personal memories to this thing which are discussed in my review that I dropped yesterday. My number two pick is one that has constantly been growing on me ever since I dropped that review. This project is also fronted by one half of one of my personal favorite duos in the field of electronic and plunder phonics music, uh, Elite Gymnastics, and that person is James Brooks with their new project Default Genders with their new album Main Pop Girl 2019. This album is so fluid, it's lush, it's like paradise, it explores nostalgia as well. It embraces the internet age and how we reflect on memories today. I think it's an extremely creative and even forward-thinking album. It's sensory overload in musical form and I highly recommend you check it out. But my number one pick for this album is a very polarizing one, especially on certain online communities, but I really did like this one. Of course I liked the album last year and I've also been a huge fan of uh, all the solo projects that the two members of this duo uh, specialize in. Yes, I am talking about Black Dresses, Thank You. Noisy, raw, furious, distorted, but underneath lies a, a glimmer of hope, uh, some sweet melodies to, to rely on. It's definitely all the characteristics that you may have loved or hated about Waste Isolation, but tenfold. And that makes it a difficult album to appreciate depending on your personal tastes. I personally loved it. I think it's the, like, a near perfect culmination of everything they did before. And truthfully, I did doubt, do I really like this album that much? I return to it? No, I really do. It's it's fantastic. Rook and Devi are just making fantastic music consistently, so frequently, and the fact that all of it has their own unique and special characteristics that are there to appreciate is, is mind-blowing to me. Now before I close out this video, I do of course have to present my favorite songs of February 2019. So we'll just sort of throw the artists and names out there. I'll go backwards so it'll count down towards my favorite of the month. So uh, Marina's new single, Handmade Heaven. I wasn't a fan of the ones she dropped afterwards, but Handmade Heaven is so good. It's heavenly. It's like a really lovely slow ballad. Number 24, Mechanical Museum's theme for Etretat. A pool of calming aquatic sound to just get lost in. Sleaford Mods with Flipside. This one reminds me of a Crash Bandicoot game. Out of Focus by Iona Jika, which is totally what you'd expect from the label Sergeant House, but it's really good. It's it's like a big crashing wave. Uh, Lucky with More Than Ever, my favorite song of his mixtape that I talked about before. The legendary avant-garde group Royal Trucks had this great single called Year of the Dog. Lee Gamble with the extremely cute uh, track Folding. Chushu with uh, uh, the horrific banger. Uh, pumpkin Attack on Mummy and Daddy, Vale Smith with Vestibule, which I mentioned before, Custer's Hollow with Survivor's Remorse, a great metalcore song that opened up the fantastic album that I mentioned before as well. This one was a surprise, Billie Eilish's Bury a Friend. I've never been a fan of Billie Eilish's music, but I think she struck gold with this one. Uh, my favorite track of the new Drenge album, Bonfire in the City Boys. Komenava Go with the abrasive and aggressive track Told Ya. Julia Jacqueline with Pressure to Party. I ended up liking this one a lot more more than I expected. Uh, Omar Apollo with a really funky, cloudy track called A Shame 
Shamed. This last one's a bit strange, but it's a fantastic combo. Throat singing and manic post-punk uh, with Minka Minkur by Malachi Dansinger. My number nine spot is Ariana Grande's Makeup. I really do love this track. It's the best off her new album. The vocal harmonies on the chorus are bliss. The instrumental reminds me of Shooting Star Summit from Paper Mario. Then the beautiful opening track to the new Default Genders album that I mentioned before when it's over. Health with the head-pounding Feel Nothing. Then the crushing 18-minute performance from Ustad Sami, a Pakistani classical singer. I reviewed his album earlier in the month, and the track is called Longing, a deeply stirring and moving experience. Then as for the top five, it's Charlotte Adigiri's High Lights, International Teachers of Pop with Praxis Makes Perfect, Shaka Khan with Like Sugar, Black Dresses Through the Void, and my song of the month, uh, Sneaks a Little Close. Such an unsuspecting song, but the impact it had over time, where I would just have that bass groove pop into my head, along with the very low-key vocals that sing that chorus, uh, it's almost whispery in a sense. You'd be surprised how easily this gets stuck in your head, and in such a great way.